with the corruption already in the universe this whole time. And they just discovered it and found a way to uh, become one with it and spread it or be able to be, be immune to it in, in a way so that it doesn't completely take over their ability of self-control. We understand now a little bit more about the timeline of events. This took the, the, the exodus to Sanctus happened as a result of the harbingers and the corruption and everything spreading. And then the races were very torn apart and fighting and very futile at first yeah. over resources and just their own basic survival as is, is we see in our own world. But then they slowly started to come together a bit. Now this happened apparently over the course of about 4,000 years. What we the big piece that we didn't know before is the why did they come back to Vera? They mm -hmm. were taking the time to rebuild the light pact. What I see from this as players, we are all entering the world as a member of the light pact. It was a swift act of consequence as the Pathfinders quickly cut down the beings who seemed to manifest themselves through these sets of enchanted armor. As they each cut down these animated creatures, they could hear faint echoes of voices that seemed to bridge the gap between the material plane and somewhere else. Their shrieks were truly echoes beyond into the past, present, and future. Welcome to Asha's Pathfinders. Your dedicated and trusted Ashes of Creation podcast. Join us as we share in the journey that reignites the embers and rekindles the flames in the hearts of those long left to cinder. I'm your host, Phoenix, also known as Samorg. I'm joined today by our returning Pathfinders. Let's welcome back, Daedalus. Hello, everyone. Also, welcome back, Half Tilt. Hello, everybody. Now, friends... This might be a bit of a how can I how can I best put this? I'm a little sleepy today. <laughs> we'll discuss that if you're kind of going, why would you be so tired, Sim? Put a pin in it, friends. We'll come right back to it. But first, gotta give a big shout out to the home of this podcast over at asheshq.com, the community curated website for Ashes of Creation. Also, a shout out to all of the Imperial Flames are the supporters here on Twitch, YouTube, and Patreon. Thank you so much, friends, for keeping this community's flames bolstering greater week after week. Now, in typical form, if you'd like to leave a call-in message, you can call in to 1539 It's been a while since we've had one of those. Would definitely welcome any messages from the Ashes fam, and fellow Pathfinders. Also, on iTunes, we are looking to get those review ratings up. So if you go over there and leave us a review, five stars would be greatly appreciated. Let us know how we're doing. Uh, leave a message for the show. Comments will be read right here live. Um, and you can go find that over at our Twitter, which is at Ashes Pathfinder on Twitter. Pinned right to the top of our profile, you will see all of the links to all of our podcast places, friends. And that's where you can go to get that information to do so if you wish. Let's see here. Unpin it, pin it. No, I guess the first, I got an HQ announcement. So over at Ashes HQ, we're kind of getting things up and running. I got some help. I got some hands on deck to help me keep things in order. So we are getting things rolling again after a you know brief respite. Had to, had to work on some things in my own world. But we do have a new game guide up on social organizations. It's a brief overview of social org. So you can go check it out. You'll find it. Um, over on the social organizations page. You also find it on Ashes HQ on YouTube. <clears throat> so check out asheshq.com or our YouTube to catch up on that. Now, I guess we could catch up on another week, right? But I'm, I'm just gonna kind of scrap what we've been up to this week. We usually catch up with the cast. We usually catch up on things that have been going on. I don't know, man. I'm feeling a little impatient. Why am I tired? Well, I helped last night. We talked about it previously. Oh, you know, I plan on getting more sleep for this event. Um, I, I think I've done a horrible job at that before. I think this year takes the cake for me, if I'm going to be really honest. Um, so as we talked about last week, Saturday to Sunday, right, was the 24-hour live stream from Intrepid Studios 
for uh, the Extra Life charity they do every year. Um, they did another great year, and uh, we'll talk briefly about that as well uh, here in just a little bit. We're going to hit on some other things first, but I did do some, uh, you know, uh, commentary slash judging uh, of their Minecraft competition during the uh, very early hours of the morning, and Sim didn't get enough sleep for that. Um, that's all I can really say about that. Uh, with my best efforts, I epically failed. And uh, uh, Dragon Ass would be a vast understatement of how I felt during that. But the beautiful part is, as you can tell exactly when, I wasn't as tired anymore. Or that, I guess, delirium sort of kicked in because it was towards the end and I start saying funny shit when I'm like, woo, you know what I mean? So that's kind of what happened. So you got the entertaining part of me for probably the most important part of it, um, which is kind of a good thing. Um, yeah, well, I'll talk about that in a little bit, a little bit here in a bit but uh yeah uh, i don't know what else to say gentlemen how the hell have you been doing yeah, doing all right i i too um am guilty of <laughs> uh not so much sleep uh i i did try to catch most of the the stream and it was definitely entertaining i i caught the tail end of the minecraft segment but from uh <laughs> from what i did see it was it was uh quite a good time oh yeah <laughs> very dynamic as they say it, it really was i i would say this year vastly um overly entertained compared to last year not to put last year down but this year was some fun it was some fun it was uh not what you would expect but we'll talk about that in a bit half tilt how about you man man i'm good it's good. it's been a long weekend I, yeah. I got a bit of sleep last night. Um, not a lot, but that's not the norm. Mm -hmm. I didn't get to catch really any of the live stream, though. I've been It's been a mm -hmm. very, very busy weekend of just real life stuff. So yeah. not much time to sit down and chill. But, man, I'm so happy to hear it went off well. I'm, I was super stoked to see that they exceeded their goal for donations and just the general vibe that I've I've been reading and hearing around mm -hmm. the community is just, yeah, people were entertained. They had fun watching the show this year and that's awesome that what more could we ask for plus plus things happen take it away <laughs> and that's your cue sim tell us all about the shenanigans that then ensued no <laughs> wait for it no actually you know what let's not wait for it i was like let's do things in a specific order today f it we're gonna we're gonna just go with it because quite frankly friends I probably don't have the mental capacity to be super organized today, if I'm going to be really honest. <laughs> I'm damn tired, y'all. I, I happily have to say I, I celebrated my anniversary with Mel. We've been together a year now, so it was a big day. Congrats. Had a great day with my family early on, but it was like, you know, when you've just like, you know, great things, nothing but great things yesterday, but I was up much earlier than I normally am, went into all the time spent together, hung out, you know, did our things rolled right into the live stream, their their charity live stream, right? Hung out there and then went right into, you know, doing doing the commentary and judging for that. And, uh, but we got, as expected, I guess, okay, the long and short of it is massive success. It looks like we ended with 32, or sorry, 34,000 as the uh, final uh, amount, you know, uh, raised their goal was i think was it originally 15k or was it 20 25 it was 25k 25. okay because i saw 15k on socials but out but the 25k was the marker i saw so it doesn't seem that they changed it then i just wanted to confirm that um a lot of pathfinders here seriously i i just got to say this okay last year we did a really great thing here we we did our own thing a day a, a week ahead we raised ten thousand dollars it was great I didn't have the capacity to do something like that this year, right? Uh, I feel like the good thing is I could contribute some of my time to kind of, you know, help bridge that gap when they, the devs were kind of catching up on sleep. Poor Maggie doesn't get sleep or toast because they, they they didn't really get that. But I will say this. Um, it, I, I just a shout out to all of the Pathfinders. We might have done our thing last year, but um, I saw so many of you all in the chat. I saw so many of you, all of you here who are, are gathering around, you know, with this show, with this community, as part of the Ashes fam, as fellow Pathfinders, I saw so many of you donating your time, donating your financial resources 
to help the kids, uh, you know, via Extra Life and Intrepid Studios for the Radius Children's Hospital. And, uh, you know, y'all, y'all did, y'all did me proud, man. I'm, I'm very proud of, uh, our Pathfinders and, and Ash as a creation community for once again, delivering, um, on, you know, being a light in the darkness, man. I know I remember saying that last year and, uh, I just want to say, uh, from, from me to you all, like, thanks so much for your contributions, even though it may not have been via me. I'm just want to say thank you because I'm proud of y'all. Um, so it's always very heartwarming to see all of you like contributing and doing what you can, even if it wasn't financially and you were just there contributing your time to being part of it. Um, you know, it all counts, man. It, it all counts. All the donations counted all of the time, all of the chats and the comments in the chat counted all of your, your minutes, your hours, your time spent there, your sleeplessness, you know, to kind of help you know, keep this moving and keeping the momentum there because that helps the developers when they're trying to keep going. It helps everybody in the community stay engaged. So everybody was there doing their part. And it was just, it was a very heartwarming um, uh, sort of scenario. But I, I do have something to say to you all. <clears throat> why are you laughing, Daedalus? I don't understand why. Huh? I, I, I don't know. I keep thinking, thinking this phrase, wait for it. I, I don't know. <laughs> I was like in the middle of doing stuff and things. And then Hids, I see you. I know Hids was one of the people who contributed, donated, and, and was also saying something about Ninja Looter Sim. Oh, but if that wasn't enough, can we just talk about the introduction from Margaret, by the way? Homie. <laughs> Although she had a very good point. She did. Yeah. She was like, go on and introduce yourself. And so I introduced myself, talked about, you know, being a GM of virtue, Ashes Pathfinders, Ashes HQ, all that stuff. Right. And then she also is like something about also known as the ninja looter in the community. I'm like, hey, what, what is, what is going on, Margaret? And then she brought up a very good point. Well, if I didn't do it, someone else would have. And I was like, oh, it's fair, I guess. So. I didn't really have anything to say to that. <laughs> it's a cool story, though. It's a cool story. It's just a story. Oh, right. Doesn't mean it's true. I just want to. But I will tell oh, you this. Legends are based in some form of reality. Yes. And this reality is called That's bullshit. <laughs> it's bullshit. <laughs> it, 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 it's the kind of. Everybody in chat is like, sure. So Sim is one of the faster ninja looters. <laughs> you guys wonder why he's so tired right now. What? What do you mean? I didn't think she. Whole night of looting out there. Yeah. Uh, there was no loot to be had. Okay, I was a watcher only in this situation. Oh, so you 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 went through. You checked it. What? You missed it. I I got you. Okay. There was a lot of people's stuff <laughs> popping. I mean, people were gonna pop like cherries in that Minecraft. We'll we'll talk about it, but. Boy, man, boy, was that fun. 34K raised, okay? Pathfinders, Ashes Fam rocking it. The Radies Children's Hospital in Intrepid Studios. Steven gets pied in the face. Also, I just want to take this moment that when you all choose to engage in a narrative that's false, I think it's very important to pay attention. How many times, I just want to point this out, okay? Steven, I, I, I'm, I'm sharing this with all the love in the world for you. Um, but I'm going to share it because I think it's very important. Y'all remember, unbelievable in chat, unbelievable. Okay, the clips that are being made, this is just unbelievable. <laughs> but let's just pause on your shenanigans, all of you, okay? And I want for a moment to just state something, okay? You'll remember that trivia game that we made that we play every now and again. You remember the one about the last bonus question? Is it true or false? Right? Is Sim a ninja looter? There's options for no. Overwhelmingly, obviously no. Then there's yes, because Steven said so. And a bunch of y'all sheep chose that answer once upon a time. This clip is for you. Remember this. Remember this. Okay, thank you. One moment. I'm just gonna try. No! Stop it! <laughs> Why won't it do it? Is he actually wielding the force? Uh, no! Oh. I'd be a horrible bad touch battle. Oh! oh. 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 
Okay, that's all I got. That's all I got. That's just, you know, it's just a clip. I felt it was important. I'm glad I could be there for for some evidence of my own. It's not a false narrative, though. This is tangible evidence, okay? So just think about that. Just think. Just think about it. Free thinking is important, friends. That's all I'm saying. (laughs) All right? That's all I got to say. So anyway... Why don't we dig in to the stuff and things from the actual, you're not sold. I don't see the connection. (laughs) What in the actual, okay, I just need to breathe a little bit. I'm going to (sighs) gentlemen, breathing techniques are important friends for self-care. I just want to put that out there for coping mechanisms and stuff when people are just unbelievably, okay, let's talk about the lore drop. Can we just talk a little bit for about the lore drop? Uh, and we'll get a back little bit? a little. Oh man, wait, should I talk about the Minecraft thing and get out the way? And then we can talk about the lore drop. This is so hard to decide. Depends. Do you want to include anything else in the show? <laughs> this is a good point. <laughs> Why don't we get the other stuff out the way? Cause I feel like lore is going to probably just take up the rest three of the pieces conversation. Of lore drops, three, three uh, gents that love uh, to talk about the lore. Yeah. The you know, yeah. Cosmetics. <laughs> Let's talk cosmetics real quick. I almost feel like I'm teasing people. The water or the the home water's homecoming, right? Now, we usually do talk about these on one of my live streams in the week. We're just kind of throwing it in here. Um, overall, we, you know, it, pretty cool. It, it's a, an interesting theme for November for me. Wasn't really kind of what I expected. The pet's super cool. Right, then it looks like a Nikwa dwarf. Uh, it looks like this is like some sort of uh, you know outfit for them. At least it does to me. And it looks like another you know uh, freehold cosmetic for them. We're getting a lot for we've gotten a lot for them. I feel like we've probably gotten what like a few now for them. Mm-hmm. When are the vet gonna yeah. get some love again? Yeah. I feel like the vet haven't really gotten love in a while right we've gotten the right which ones haven't yeah. has gotten the least I think love it's been a while it's been a while i'm thinking the tower was that the last one they're due vecker due maybe you want another one after that the dwarves have gotten a lot of love though yeah definitely yeah. the dwarves have gotten a lot of love mm-hmm. um and like the Rinkai. probably K-Lar. say the human yeah, yeah. kalar yeah kalar and yeah so yeah Overall, it's pretty cool, right? It, it does sort of have, you know, when you look at like the caravan skin, it does actually sort of have like this. <clears throat> I don't know, kind of it feels a little bit like lead up to December sort of feel to it. But overall, it's not really something water. I probably would have seen that as like a spring thing. So it was definitely different because usually, I mean, we had like the one year we had like the pack of like, you know, it looked like um it looked like a bunch of november stuff right looked like a bunch of thanksgiving oriented sort of stuff um so this was different to see this time of year overall is pretty cool i i mostly have to say that most of it doesn't resonate for me doesn't mean it's not good just doesn't really resonate for me which i'm actually cool with because that means that like you know they've hit they've saved, hit it. saved the money this month pretty yeah. pretty pretty much right pretty pretty much basically that but it, overall, that that living wave pet skin though was really cool, man. That thing's freaking adorable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I would agree there. I, I I very much get like I feel like this is a pack kind of dedicated towards our OCE fam. Um, it, it, it's got that really like uh, Polynesian kind of mm. feel to it, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's like spring going into summer there right now, so. Fair. Good maybe, point. maybe it's somewhat appropriate, right? Yeah. Uh, I yeah. love I love the art. I love the design of this. I think it's gorgeous. It doesn't mm-hmm. appeal to me for something I want to buy, but I absolutely love the way it looks. I think it's really it does that influence justice, I feel, mm-hmm. in that pet. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I think it's cool. 
would be a very good play on southern hemisphere right like people live in the southern hemisphere kind of this is like more seasonally appropriate for them um but that you know what that pet reminds me of right I, anybody else see it or is it just me does this remind you of the boss in Mr. Pandarian World of Warcraft that one do you know which one I'm talking about yeah yeah I don't that, remember like, the retreats name retreats back and you have to follow it and it's like you know, there's like the was it the Shaw of Anger or something's like kind of messing with the waters or whatever, and mm -hmm. it like yeah, retreats back until you have a final battle with it or something. And yeah, I, I remember it being in Mist of Pandaria. I forget the name, but this totally reminds me of that. Um, you know, and, and which was a really cool looking boss at the, in my opinion. I thought it was really cool. It's a wet Groot. I think it was like a Mersus or something like that. I want to say a Mersus was the name so, of the. Yeah, I can't remember, man. It's just such a hard thing to remember for me, but. It's, it's a wet Groot. Nice. Were, it's a wet Groot. <laughs> wet Groot. It is I mean, cool. I, 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 I honestly, I don't know. I mean, generally, like, I, I, um, I probably would have, like, under normal circumstances, wouldn't have gone for this, but I don't know. I've been kind of digging wanting like a like a nice beach vibe and they delivered this month um on it for sure so i'm like i would say out of character in terms of things that i would normally go for i'm actually really liking this i like the freehold i think somebody mentioned something yeah. about it maybe being like a bar in cancun uh, <laughs> I, I, I think that's awesome. great funny I, honestly it's like now i want a water freehold more than anything Yo. like something that's on the coast Oh, I mean, man. I would just love that. <laughs> Can you imagine if you, I mean, think about having your own tavern off on like a coastal node and being able to apply something like that to it. Wouldn't that be sick? Yeah, that would be sure. awesome. That would be perfect, dude. That would totally look, that would be like a, a, a literal, uh, you know, like coastal node tavern or something. That would look, that would mm -hmm. legit look perfect for it. My yeah. first, thought when i saw that because i just saw them on the stream here for the first time mm. was i wonder if that comes with tiki girls <laughs> oh my god <laughs> just uh, drinks with umbrellas bro that's funny <laughs> right some chairs on the beach yeah it's, it's just got cool. that like tropical yep. vacation resort yes. vibe to it and i really really like that that's cool it does yeah yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty I, cool. I think the mound is pretty intricate too. I I really like that. Mm. Um, and and like I think you had mentioned it too. Half tilt the necklace. Again, it's like that level of detail, and you know, just based on history, that they're gonna hit the mark on that. Yes. Actually, when that actually gets into the game, and yeah, definitely the, you know, the pet was, in my opinion, you know the the one that I like the most, but I, I like them all. Cause they just, I like the use of color, the detail. Um, and it just, you know, it, it kind of gave me a little bit of like, um, I want to say like, it's like a combination of a, like a, like a beach theme, but also L O T R with the costumes, because I like the hood part of it. This felt like you had like these Nikoa fishermen mm -hmm. and they're kind of you know they've got their like little you know beach house and they're gonna go out and they're gonna you know do some fishing it just i don't know it just it just vibe with me this year you know i actually do kind of dig the the outfit for the doors right there i i, I i'm a, kind of a big fan of that style i don't know that i'd really care too much for like the colors per se but I think as far as like the the whole like leave sort of like, I don't know, like sort of shoulders and like just the way that like the the I don't know if you want to say it's like a robe, but just the way their outfit sort of sits with the hood. That would be like pretty cool for like a for like a dwarven mage style armor for me. Like if I was rolling around and I was playing a dwarf and he was a caster like good old Puntus back in Alpha One. Like if I was rolling around on my Puntus character. You guys get it right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> people, <laughs> what are how many people are listening going? Punt this. What kind of name is that? I'm like, take a moment. Just let it marinate. It's a joke grenade. You'll get it. You'll get there. It, but that's perfect, dude. I could imagine rolling around in something like that. That's actually, if I was gonna be like a caster on a on a 
you know, dwarf or like a gnome or something. That's what I, the way I'd want to look. To me, that vibe's right. Um, if I could dye it, it does have ghillie suit vibes, doesn't it? On the shoulders and upper arms, right? Mm-hmm. Like, like I bound hay to my legs and my arms and stuff. I'm like, man, you know, that's gonna don't be rolling around on, you know, playing Minecraft with uh, the dev team though, because what a great segue to talk about that. Yo, judging it was great. Can I just talk about something real fast? We shouldn't even bother doing building next year. If history has taught, taught us anything, it's that the development team specifically enjoys ruining each other's worlds. Okay. Um, yeah. Autumn, I'm talking mainly about you, homie. The bloodlust was real. Not saying I didn't appreciate it at all. Kind of did. Um, but it just turned into this like crusade where like they started building. And the ones that won were the ones that, you know, we kind of judge. It was like they just kept, they just stayed the course, man. They just really kept at it, persevered. No matter how many times someone came and burned their stuff, pretty much everybody burned everybody's stuff down. That's what the long and short of this is, right? So why don't we just, I have a suggestion. How about next year? This is just a thought, right? Just a suggestion from, uh, you know, a lowly, you know, peasant in the community that suggests, can we bring back the BR for next year and just have people jump in the BR and go ham? That'd be great. I'd love it. Could we? I would love it. Why don't we have team versus everybody or, or whatever, you know what I mean? How about we just bring the BR back and do some sort of a, I think that would be amazing. Cause you know what I thought about as I woke up today, half asleep, not knowing where I was at in life or anything. I woke up today and I thought to myself, man, you know, that was kind of cool watching them go ham and just trying to take each other out and all the like fighting words. I'm like, that would have been so good if we were watching that in the deck of APOC environment. Also, how many people that have kind of joined in the past year and a half don't really have the experience of APOC, by the way? Like some of us do. And that we've shown videos of it and everything. There's a lot of people that never really got to see that environment. And so I'm kind of thinking to myself, like, Look, people want blood and to burn, right? It's murder. They want to get at their friends and take them out. That's yeah, cool. All in good fun. It's in the game. I support that decision. Is, could we spin up APOC? That'd be cool. That'd be solid. I would I'd be that would, so keen on that. That would be kind of cool. I would like that. I would love to I would love to do a commentary on that. You know? I would. I would. I'd have fun with that. You know what I mean? Oh, he's sniping from the top of the mage's tower. Oh, he's coming up with a potion launcher. You know what I mean? Oh, baby. Burst him down. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yo. I don't know, man. What do y'all think, though, fam? Do y'all think that that would be kind of cool? I I like the Minecraft thing. I just think that... um, And I actually kind of like the direction it went. I'm not actually complaining. It was actually very entertaining. It started off, we were like, oh, they're using these things. They're doing these. They had some, Toast had a really cool mini game sort of set up. People were like, and this was actually a really cool choice too. And I don't know if they could do this, but they had it to where there were donations amount where you, uh, donation amounts that where you could affect the Minecraft scenario, like dropping dynamite in, dropping people in. Like you would literally pick somebody and be like, all right, bloodthirst, go. You got to go and just head out there. First person you see you kill. Right. And take their stuff. And then you go. It it was like those conditions were great. I would love to see that in a BR, though. You know, like like something like you, you know, you, you got to go the next match with only like catfall boots or this or that or whatever. And you've got to stay on the tower. You know, what I mean, you can't you know, whatever, whatever the conditions are. It'd be pretty fun, man. It it would be pretty fun. It would also give some really good insight for the people that are sort of newer uh, to kind of see, at least for my, in my mind, as we're getting into alpha two and talking about the, the skills and the the class kits that are going to become available to get an idea of like how some of these abilities and skills sort of have kind of evolved because you definitely do see some of those. I mean, you have the blink boots, 
You had Catfall boots, right? Catfall boots tie into Ranger stuff. Blink boots tie into Mage stuff, right? You had Bleed effects, probably tying into Fighter or something, I'm guessing, down the road. So there were a lot of skills. You had the bows, and, you know, it'd be great. People want to see bows again. But I don't know. It's just an idea. I think it would be a lot of fun. The Minecraft shenanigans this year were uh, just absolutely hilarious. And as we got closer to the end, I couldn't help but just laugh at just how horribly dreadful the whole situation sort of became. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, I was no words for a while. I was like, oh, wow, this is happening like this. Okay. I mean, I, I came in just as one of the uh, groups went. I saw this beautiful structure. I'm like, oh, that's so awesome. And then all of a sudden I see all this lava everywhere and it burned that that to the ground and i was like so sad i'm like this hurts my heart a little man i mean then it was just it just went downhill from there but i have to agree like who who ultimately won were the people that were like yes. we're not gonna let this deter us you know and yeah. it was really cool to see like some of the creativity mm -hmm. i mean before stuff got burned to the ground of course <laughs> but uh but yeah it was it was a pretty good time it was Yeah, I think Frozen's saying, I think Minecraft's better for the stream, but maybe not just a building competition. True, they could have just made it an all-out like brawl sort of thing, because there's Minecraft PvP as well, right? And the thing that's really cool about that is, like, you know, you could even, like, go, okay, so we're going to have a, a, a war, build your, build your forts. You have, like, an hour to kind of create a stronghold, Right? You have an hour or two or whatever to create a stronghold to set up a trap, right? You know what I'm saying? And then go at each other. I mean, you could literally go, your point's here, your point's here. You can see each other, you're pretty good distance away. And now, the, like, two teams have got to duke it out. And you get, you know, we could be like, you're, here's the items you're going to get. Here's the resources you're going to get. You know what I mean? Build a stronghold. Build your defenses, right? This is what you get to start with. You know, here are some weapons strategize and go for it right and then you know being able to like just kind of like see it all happen that could be pretty entertaining who knows how long that go on for either you know you can even put like spawn points to where it's like boom boom right you know mm -hmm. i mean you could totally set up that way so anyway i'd love to see what people think how they kind of felt about this year's minecraft competition what their big takeaways were bathe and fire anybody kind of something that comes to mind um but yeah, I think the team that that won, they just they really did just sort of stay the course. And they really did try to keep like the tree, like the element of like here was the, you know, the sort of like uh, freehold they were supposed to go for or the sort of like structure they were going for. And they they really did try to stick to it and and try to deliver on what that was and it certainly was not easy cuz some some People were left with nothing left except for a few blocks up hovering and, you know, of what once was the vision that they tried to create for us. So anyway, the cosmetics are in the shop. The current cosmetics that we've been talking about are going to be in the shop right through December 8th, 11 a.m. PDT. They're currently up right now. You can go check them out if you're interested. Um, as far as our notes on some of the other things, we've talked about um, all the things I really wanted to hit on. We showed the clip as evidence to support um, why it's important not to always uh, believe what Steven says, especially when he paints a false narrative around me or other people in the community. Um, also, I just want to mention that there are clips out there um, of him trying to use his uh, GM powers to not die and stuff. Um, so it does align a bit. But, but I say that with all the love in the world. Steven. He took the pies to the face this year. He, he took them like a champ, but I was a little concerned because I was like, I feel like he's having a hard time breathing in there. If you've watched it, did you watch it? I was I, like, that part I did watch. And then they were like, I, I there was a whole conversation before then. It's like, can we like put a pie on his head? And Margaret's <laughs> like, no, that's the brain of the operation, man. You can't, you can't mess with his head. <laughs> oh that's too funny yeah i mean yeah I, I, I do need to to point out one thing about all these clips of steven gm hacking and all that stuff there's one key difference <laughs> that isn't being pointed out right now that I, i'm going to shed some light on here okay he never denies it 
He never denies his use of these tactics. That's a fair point. What are you trying to say, though? He does it. He wears the badge with pride. <laughs> Openly knows. I'm a clicker in PvP. I'm not great at it. True. Says it on the live stream. So, mm, yeah. Just to play a little devil's advocate, as I like to do from time to time. Right. You want to, you want to, is there anything else you want to elaborate on that you're advocating for here? No, no not at all. Not at all. I, I, I like leaving as, as much up to interpretation <laughs> as possible. <laughs> I figured so. Gentlemen, you ready to dig into the good stuff here? This is the stuff we've been waiting for, and this is where the shit rest of the show is just going to go. Mm-hmm. What's I'm ready. Okay. I'm just going to talk about, and I'm going to link this uh, shout out to Lex and all of those that were, that run the wiki. They've gotten this allocated to the wiki in record time, right? Lex was actually part of uh, some of the people that, you know, were, were doing the Minecraft building along with some of the community mods like V and some of, you know, like luring and some of the others, a lot of intrepid staff, right. That, that, you know, had their time there. Um, which, by the way, they can get vicious up there at Intrepid Studios, man. They they can, right? But it's all good fun. Here we go, the wiki, my friends. They got up the three parts, okay? It, like we talked about last time, if certain milestones are met in typical format, in typical fashion, what do we get? Lore bites. Friends, I'm just going to note. Now, Daedalus has got some points. I know Half Tilt kind of got to look over some of this stuff. I haven't read through thoroughly. Expect that we're going to probably be talking about this a little while. Last year we took it. Pause. A clip in my chat called Own It. Unpause. Okay. I'll come back to that later. Sometime. Three parts of the lore were revealed. Okay. It's okay. It's all good. It's all good fun. <laughs> Three parts of lore revealed. Now, last year when we got lore revealed, you remember last week when we talked, I was like, look, when they, when, if we hit the milestones, it's usually, usually significant enough to really thread, tie pieces together, you know, take the thread to interweave the pieces that we've got to kind of like tie things together. It's definitely done that. It's also raised questions as it typically does. Which I know we don't really have Stephen coming on for anything. We did hit 150 episodes today, by the way, friend. So probably should have started hey. the show with that. I don't really focus on the number, but I feel like that's probably worth noting today. 150. Absolutely. Congratulations. Longest running podcast. Longest running podcast. Yeah. There it is. Well, there it is. in any case, we have the most episodes of weekly coverage for sure, by far. Right. It's a lot of dedication. It's a lot of time, friends, right? It's not to measure. It really is a lot of time. 150 episodes is a lot. Um, That's years, man. And that's years of both dedication from those on the show and all of you that are here. Because without all of you, quite frankly, the show wouldn't, we wouldn't have an audience. So we wouldn't, we wouldn't have a show. We'd just be, get, we'd just be talking to ourselves. Live streaming and talking to ourselves. So thank you for being here. But friends, oh, you know we like our lore on this show, don't you? Right? This has been a big 40-minute tease, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> and damn, you're going to love this, I think. Let's just get into it. Can we talk about the one specifically? We'll just start with the one I want to talk about, and then we'll go from there. Minerva Arsana. Purian Emissary of the Light Pact, the Book of the Varen Exodus. Okay, we got three parts and part one. This was written by Kyrie Patrika Arasana, or Patrika Arasana, however you pronounce it. I'm not gonna mince it's words here, but there is this really great introduction, and we've got Kyrie Patrika Arasana, chronologist, and is it Scribe Venner? How do you say that? I've never actually seen that word my entire life. I'm assuming that's scribe. <laughs> is that what that <laughs> is? Yeah. Yeah. yeah very, very like uh, intricate language, which I think was really cool too, to be able mm. to see that. 
Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So tells of the homecoming, right? And it begins talking about King Atrax, who we heard about last year. And I'm going to hit a few of these points and just kind of read them, okay, real quick. Nothing too lengthy here, but for the people that are listening, it starts off by saying, Know then that the unforgivable sin of Atrax was his unbridled hubris. In an attempt to unlock the secrets of immortality, the torn king began an obsessive study of ancient artifacts and profane magics. Now, friends, if you remember last year, we talked about King Atrax, the first lich on Vera. The first. We talked about his interactions with the ancients, but here we get a little bit more. So I'm going to continue. This drew the attention of the ancients, a fallen race banished into the void in ages past. For the first time since their exile, the ancients became aware of the four races created by the seven to replace them as the stewards of creation. So this was the moment they became aware that the races actually exist. Right. So this is a big this is a big snapshot. They didn't know until this occurred. According to this. Right. And it continues when the ancients saw that these races were growing, multiplying and conquering the world that had been taken from them. They became envious and spiteful. In a fit of peak, they unloosed the harbingers. Great balls of ice dust and corruption from the heavens and hurled them upon the face of Vera. Important takeaway right there, my friends. These weren't just, according to this text, my takeaway is these weren't just constructs nat that navigated the their way here. We We've hypothesized around this for a long time. Did the others have a big hand in this? Well, maybe they did. Maybe this is a superficial excerpt from, of text that gives us a bit of a snapshot. How, however, what we're hearing here is that the ancients, right, out of envy and spite, what it sounds like to me, what are, what are great balls of, of ice and dust that exist in our heavens, friends? Well, most of us are going to go probably going to gravitate towards what things like comets or asteroids. Those are probably things we're going to think of. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking in my mind, they, they just, you know, keep in mind, they're not in the material plane of Vera. They're not in that realm of existence. They're in this void. So it makes you wonder, well, when you're out there in space, how do, how do these planes really how do they really align and interweave, right? Like what kind of influence level do the others of the ancients have outside of the planet itself, this, this material plane of existence, the planet, it makes you wonder. And so I'm, my thoughts are they just decided to corrupt things that existed in the cosmos and just shoot them, sling them right on down, direct them as ammunition. I mean, I, my mind is thinking asteroid belt, snatch it, corrupt it, turn it into ammunition now, right? My mind goes to a different place than it did before. Again, this is just a super off the wall idea, but before we continue, you, what do you all think? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm actually thinking more the comet now that I've had a chance to let it, you know, this yep. whole lore drop marinate a little bit. I'm thinking it's definitely more like comet because back in, you know, is it Delia's diary, right? Yep. They talked about lights in the sky, right? And granted, that could also be an asteroid falling to Earth, but still, I just felt like it it just feels like it's more than that. And when they talk about ice, mm -hmm. like generally you're going to see, yep. you know, comets, comets have that ice there. So, I mean, this, this was like a really, really cool reveal to be able to get that. And, and just, you know, before I kind of dig into any more, I mean, I, I think there was 
some trepidation from Maggie about the voiceover work on this, uh, but it was really good. It added so much to it to be able to kind of get the different voices in there. It just it just added a lot um, more depth to it mm -hmm. than just reading it would have. Um, so I think that that's really really good, and and the fact that you see generations of um, you know the Pyrian race. Uh, and we start getting some more hints at, uh, you know, the length of time that, you know, elves, you know, can be on, you know, alive. I mean, I think that was good, too. You know, we were probably now, I would speculate now, a couple of thousand years, which, you know, is in line with what we think of classic elves. But it's still nice to kind of see that. Um, it's nice to see some of those things. And there's there's more as you get on with it in regards to like some racial traits, yeah. but it was really good to be able to see them potentially hinting at some of the racials that might come into play, particularly with the elves, particularly with, um, you know, the, the Tolnar as well. Cause there's, there's just so much here. Uh, but yeah, this, this one especially I think was really good to be able to see all those connection points between a tracks, between the ancients, between the seven and like what they did in order to, you know, activate um, the portals to Sanctus, and then what the trigger point was to bring everybody back. Mm. And it's, it felt like, okay, so I'm, I kind of felt like this was, you know, some somewhat of like a, a flavor version of what happened on Earth, right? With an extinction level event, wipes the world clean and starting over. And maybe some of the tenants around how the seven, uh, you know, wanted the races to behave. And at the end of the day, right now, that will be in the players' hands. Whether or not they choose to unite or splinter or what have you, right? This mm -hmm. this is the story that we're gonna tell. So, yeah, I, this 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 was really good stuff. And I'm I'm definitely want to do some rereads um, when I'm a little more awake just to see if there's any more nuggets. But there's definitely a lot here. Oh, yeah. um, even in just this first one with it's kind of shifts voices between, mm -hmm. you know, uh, earlier in the lineage of, uh, Arisiana, uh, and, and kind of later on with the, the scribe, which I know I, I, I like this. I almost like got some bard vibes from it because you've got a storyteller, you've got a chronicler. Mm -hmm. And I know in the past, um, Stephen has mentioned something about, you know, bards don't necessarily need, just need music, right? they, they can have dance, they can have, you know, they can write. I mean, this is just, again, just a lot of layers here. Just a lot to kind of talk about, at least from my perspective. I know there's probably all, a lot from all uh, all y'all too, but uh, but yeah, this this was a really good first first one. Um, mm. it, it whetted the appetite for sure for uh, the others. Yeah. Oh, I've got more thoughts too. We aren't even done with the first one. <laughs> We might need three episodes just to get through all three pieces of this. Yeah. Thing. Are you kidding me? I'm going to be talking about these on live streams for weeks still outside of this show. This is going to take... This is plenty of content. I told you. I told you they dropped stuff then, and then it's like, oh, shit. Thanks for the thanks for the content for the next month and a half, two months till the end of the year. Appreciate it. Believe me, I can work with it. that's the fun it. part, right? Mm -hmm. we, you share your thoughts. Yep. And then we hear those thoughts. And we combine yeah. those with our thoughts Bouncing and then around. portray those. And then, you know, the whole, this perpetuates throughout the whole community. So, yep. yeah, guys, hop in the Discord. Yes. Share your thoughts on this lore, too, because mm. this theory crafting is what is a ton of fun to oh, do. Oh, yes. A and the little <laughs> points and the little takeaways, a lot like you might be the only person that sees it from a certain angle. Yes. And it just it sheds a whole new perspective on the whole take, you know, exactly. and, and that's the cool stuff, right? Like mm -hmm. we all have different approaches, different things that we parse through this with. And, and that's where it's at. Like, yes, I, I love I love the way this was delivered this year. Like last year, mm -hmm. it, the, the content was awesome. Steven was reading it all just kind of on the spot. That was really cool. This was all clearly well prepped ahead of time and rehearsed yeah. and everything done with the voice acting. I loved how it was delivered that was super cool to me because it really ties into the game now it's not just somebody reading you a story per se 
Yes. Love that. Love that. Mm -hmm. This first one, mm -hmm. man, it tied so much of last year's and the old APOC logs together. That kind of yeah. origin story really started to get a bit of light behind it. You know, yeah, we learned a little bit now about the Elvian race, what their lifetime is like. Um, but we also learned, you know, talking about the comets and the harbingers coming down. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Th that talks about a, something in this physical plane that the ancients might not have had access to. What did the others play a part in that? Did the others treat these harbingers the same way the seven treated the four portals? the divine gateways. Yeah. Maybe that's their way of doing it. I, I, the comments are clearly a vehicle. They're a vehicle to bring and spread corruption. Like how many sci-fi movies have we seen that an asteroid hits earth right. and some alien contagion or species yep. now takes over and infests yep. In fact, and consumes everything it can consume because it's a virus and it spreads. Now I'm thinking that this is yeah. like what the corruption kind of is. Yep. Is this something that the ancients had simply discovered Was the corruption already in the universe this whole time. And they just discovered it and found a way mm. to uh, become one with it and spread it or be able to be, be immune to it in, in a way so that it doesn't completely take over their ability of self-control. We understand now a little bit more about the timeline of events. This took the, the, the Exodus to Sanctus happened as a result of the harbingers and the corruption and everything spreading. And then the races were very torn apart and fighting and very futile at first yeah. over resources and just their own basic survival, as is, is we see in our own world. But then they slowly started to come together a bit. Now, this happened apparently over the course of about 4,000 years. What we the big piece that we didn't know before is the why did they come back to Vera? They mm -hmm. were taking the time to rebuild the light pact. What I see from this as players, we are all entering the world as a member of the light pact. And, and, and now we have to choose are we going to fight for that or not? But we are coming back as kind of this that, that, that was kind of what I got of the last, the last little bit, last few sentences of this uh, first lore drop is that we're, all of the outposts being established around Vera at first are light pack low. Maybe not all of them, but a, the light pack is spreading a bunch of outposts around. So that's going to be a huge port, part of that initial character development storyline, I think. Mm -hmm. Where the Talnar come into this, now that's a whole other story, and we'll get oh, to that. But yeah. for, for, for the lore drop one, that's kind of my big takeaway, is we've got just over 4,000 years of rebuilding a focus through many generations to now come back and reclaim our home world. You know, one of the things I wonder about is, well, I mean, first of all, as Vera fell, the seven activated the divine gateways. These ancient portals transported the four races to safety on the Tellurian non-magical world of sanctus to await the day they could safely return to vera so those seven activated it we also know that the avatar of the phoenix essentially is like the fuel for it right i mean that's the way i looked at it the fuel the conduit of some sort right and it's essentially like the source of keeping it open we we know this from last year so you know, it's like, it makes you wonder, like, is there like sort of a ritual that took place to kind of open it? Is there like a communion with a deity to kind of open it? How did that, how does that exactly sort of unfold specifically? Like the details of that, I mean, I would light pack, right? I mean, I think to me in my mind, clearly it would be light packed. I mean, order of the seven exists for a reason, right? The gateways were, I mean, the light pact are the ones that helped to essentially build those gateways to create them. But this Tellurian, is that like Tolnar? What, what is that? Cause I go and I look at the wiki and I try to like scour what we mean by Tellurian. And it that actually means of the earth. Is it? Which, yeah. Oh, yeah, I actually interesting. Up. So why don't we dig into that data list? What do we think of a Tellurian? Yeah, I, mean, I, I started looking at all these words. I'm like, they were very precise with the mm -hmm. words they chose right obviously as 
you know, as writers. And I know, I think Wynn and a few others had a hand in this and they kind of banged this out right before mm -hmm. the charity stream, but they were very, very uh, purposeful with the words they use in it. I've always in the back of my mind, and I don't know how true this is. Maybe it's an earth like planet. Right. But I feel like Sanctus, mm -hmm. they're always hinting that it's like earth, right? Is sure everyone gets Exodus to like a planet with no magic, right? A place with no magic. You know, they say the word Tellurian, which again is like it links it back to Earth like planet, right? Because it's it's a place of the earth. So it's I don't know, I think I think they're they're continuing to give us crumbs and threads to kind of tie this all together. And I just it just feels like um this is uh you know this is is linking it back to some sort of Earth-like planet. Whether or not it's actually Earth is kind of to, you know, I guess to be confirmed at some point in the future. Um, but still, I, I do like the fact that they, you know, were very purposeful with some of these words. You kind of had to pause, mm -hmm. read, reread, and kind of get to it. And there's just a, there's a lot more, you know, detail and that unfolds after that. Because, you know, what you were saying, Half Tilt, definitely it's like yeah we're all potentially all part of the light pack but also right mm -hmm. i think based on and this might have been in more of the third lore drop than the first um was they were talking a lot about maybe conflict when everybody did go to sanctus and how mm -hmm. um the elven races you know their you know their ability to hold their own was severely impacted by the fact that there wasn't magic. So kind of coming back to we, you know, some of the thinking that, you know, the elven races are more like attuned to magic and not having that connection to the essence on Sanctus, or at least connecting to some sort of magic, it put them at a disadvantage. And now I'm just thinking, okay, now coming back, okay, Stella's got a groove back, right? So now we've got magic coming back into the picture and obviously right as you deal with different types of you know races you're going to get inevitably get conflict yeah. when one becomes more powerful than the other or one that was subjugated potentially on sanctus now yeah. becomes a force to be reckoned with once again mm -hmm. and how does that play into the lore um and and one of the other things that I thought was really cool as they were setting this up is the fact that all these stories that we're getting snippets of now are going to be like there when we come into the world for the first time, right? That we're going to be able to go and write these lore books. And I was joking with Sim here before the podcast, man, I'm going to probably lose a few hours of leveling time because I'm going to go and look <laughs> for all these books so yeah. I can read yeah. up on them yeah. and, you know, you know, get my, my lore in before, um, you know, before uh, we get there, um, you know, to to start the leveling process, I, I need some some uh, pre time to be able to do that. Maybe we'll see those in al alpha or beta, but I, I doubt it. <laughs> so yeah, Tellurian, huh? Mm -hmm. Of or inhabiting the Earth, it's very specific. Or if we're going with noun, an inhabitant of the Earth specifically so is sanctus supposed to be earth or is it supposed to be earth like is the question mm -hmm. right is this an alternate explanation for our own world and cosmos or is it a parallel in in regard to terminology that's the question because you know, as someone who's like a world builder myself, I have I have tinkered with the idea of stories and another explanation for how Earth could exist. It's fun because what if Earth had magic or didn't have magic? What if us as human beings or, you know, uh, those who exist on this planet had a, had another explanation for our own history? There's a lot of ways, you know, and we even talk about um, Stephen talking about the stargate and how that has an influence and like you know some mm -hmm. of that so the the guys the guy's mind's working in the same domain as some of the things i've really enjoyed stargate right 
a lot mm-hmm. of these different things that we've seen, you can't help but wonder where this is going, right? Like specifically where it's going, like what what the vision is, because I don't know. I, I never sat in those D&D, sorry, Pathfinder campaigns back in the day when he was brewing the stuff up, right? There's only certain people that know. And I love lore. I love it. I love it. I love it. But here's another good takeaway is the um, Elven lifespan. I don't know. Half tilt. Dig into any of that, man. Yeah. I mean, close to 2K years. That's now I, I'm. That, that, that's two generations on Sanctus. That's not much. I'm really curious to see where the other one, other races are going to lie on there. I mean, obviously humans, they've gone through dynasties in the time of one elven life. Like the, the disparity there is huge, just huge. Yeah. And that, that mastery that they can develop in that time, that one with the essence that they can attune themselves to in that time. It, yeah. There, there's something there, there's going to be something more there i think something special there but i also agree yes elves are really good for throwing at orcs unbelievable <laughs> one other thing i kind of just uh, jumping off of your point around uh stargate and kind of the parallels there one of the things that really just kind of you know gets my go at about other games right is there's always like whenever there's like a new area, it's like, oh, we just discovered this new area we didn't know about, right? And that always steams me because it's like, wouldn't you always know it was there? I mean, you know, at some point, right? But I do like the idea of like as we get into, you know, maybe getting a little ahead, but as we get into like areas of expansion, like it would be really neat to be able to have like portals to other worlds we can go to that from a biome perspective oh. are just vastly different from Vera. Uh, I think that would be really cool to be able to do. And maybe some of the quest lines um, that lead up to that could be us building another divine gateway or, you know, somehow unlocking a divine gateway in a dungeon or mm-hmm. something or a raid for that matter. I mean, I just, I feel like there's a lot of possibilities here with the divine gates being a thing and, and allowing people to go to other worlds um other than vera uh so uh, yeah it just definitely yeah. again just once again really rich here and mm-hmm. and conversations for for days we've hypothesized the on this. Worth- oh yeah <laughs> we, we've hypothesized i mean i think one of my earliest like theories is we're we're not just gonna be on vera the moment you tell me there's a gateway like we go back to the earliest information around ashes of creation Right. What was the original story blurb that we had? Thousands of years, the gateways have opened and we return. That's the initial or like that's the story from back in the Kickstarter and and stuff. Right. The Mm -hmm. gates have been asleep for a long time. They've been activated. We enter a once forgotten land. Essentially to pioneer a new beginning for civilization. That's it. That's that's ashes of creation in a nutshell, the most basic form of why we're in the like what we're doing when things start what we do when we get here that's it everything else is just the all the layers of detail that that really superficial explanation uh is indicative of right and so when you you look at all of these things here i mean we've talked like the second you tell me there's a gateway we're going through and that people are coming from another planet back to one that they've been gone from for a long time most solar systems have multiple planets you're already telling me there's one more. Now we're talking about realms and separation of material and the void and, and different planes of existence and stuff. And you tell me we're going to come back from a, a Tellurian planet. Oh, I'm s- yeah, that, 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 that nerd thing that we talked about last week just kind of happened, but I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> valid valid it, 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 you, you guys literally we a gateway to any damn planet you want anytime um the elder scrolls online does a really cool thing with the realms like 
the Daedric Plains and Realms of Existence, they have this like world map. Uh, well, map of Tamriel. We'll call it a map of Tamriel. It's not really the map of Nern per se. It's the map of Tamriel. And on the map of Tamriel, on the outer track, there are these little bubbles. And you can click on the bubbles. You can go in. There's a new map. New expansion that release has that right now. These are realms of or planes of existence, uh, you know, for like the Daedric realms that we go to or something like that. I mean, perfect setup, right? The world, the yeah. world map expands to a universal cosmic map. You have it in World of Warcraft too. You got Azeroth. You got the Eastern, Eastern uh, kingdoms. And you got uh, Kalimdor on the on the um, western side. Eastern kingdoms on the eastern side. And you got your world map, and you got all the stuff that pops up over time, right? Then, mm -hmm. what eventually happens is you can go through what the Dark Portal, Burning Crusade. Mm-hmm. You are setting us up for plenty of planets, realms of existence, wherever the hell you want to go. I called it years ago. I'm still sticking to it. We will not always play on Vera. We'll leave Vera and we'll go somewhere else. I 100% believe it. Without a doubt. And all the years have taught me is that I should feel more confident about that. Absolutely. And, and plus, like, there's just so many possibilities with you know, gates, because gates can malfunction, oh, gates can yes. be sabotaged, right? So you could have like a tear in the plane of existence yes. and have like an area pop up. I mean, <laughs> nerd factor to 27.25 right on this Oops. podcast, I'm telling you. Yeah. <laughs> right? There, there's so much, you know, there's so much they could do here, uh, you know, definitely. And honestly, you know, what? what's I started thinking about as we were moving to Sanctus and like hearing about like elves losing their magic. Is this like kind of like a, a Star Trek thing where at some point, you know, the Klingons didn't have their foreheads. Did the elves not have their ears? Did they not have a lengthy lifespan while on Sanctus or did they still right? How does that all work? Um, and how like upon their return, right? I'm just, I'm honestly, I'm really intrigued now um by the origin story um for the elves coming back uh and kind of how that the uh, <laughs> uh chat it does not necessarily liken the fact that they might not have their uh their pointy ears here but look but still it is it it is definitely you know there's there's some different ways you can go with this so i'm really intrigued to see how the races handle themselves like in terms of of like their appearance when they did not have magic versus now coming back and like how that transition occurred. Um, and obviously it's not like instantaneously they're like back to their powerful selves. There's obviously a, um, a leveling process we're going to have to go through to rediscover our magic. Um, even for the human like based races, but it's still like a lot of, you know, layers here in terms of the, the travel between worlds. Man, you know what? You hate on elves if you want to. I'm not saying I'm just pro elf, but let's not get it twisted. Based on what we're reading here, if the elves didn't have the lifespan that they have, what might have been lost in history? Like, you know what I mean? What might have been lost if they hadn't been there to to keep account of it for so long? Right. Yeah. We, we originally talked about, I think we like hypothesized somewhere in the area of like 5,000 years, roughly, you know, if I'm not mistaken, Pretty damn close of mm -hmm. the, yeah. From Exodus to return. Right. So 5,000 years, if we're roughly going to estimate that, um, that Kyrie was, uh, as a chronologist is 863 years old by Elvin reckoning and rapidly approaching midlife. Double it up, 16, 1700, roughly. You know, if you're going to say 2000 is like a rough estimate of lifespan for an elf, 246, great grandmother, do the math. It adds up. I mean, she could be alive at the time of the return. Right? Great grandmother. We're, we're talking roughly 5,000 years by the time she's, this is actually, this whole text is written. You know, she she probably is going to be a, a character in this game. I would be shocked if she wasn't. Yeah, I would agree there. Wise old sage. Yeah. You know, the one that's kept 
kept, you know, the history, the person that's a reflection of that. And, um, you know, like, like the elves or not, I mean, I, I have a feeling that Kyrie is going to be a prominent figure when we come back, you know, someone that you're going to be probably interacting with on some, some level. I would be shocked if you weren't. I mean, it's good though. If that's the case, you know, I'm just, it's a little bit of speculation, but I don't think it's really too far fetched. But it's kind of cool if that's the case, if we're here we are gearing up for Alpha 2 and we're kind of getting a little bit of, of a historical perspective on a potential primary character that we might we might very well be interacting with for a lot of the game. Mm -hmm. That's cool, man, because we don't really know a whole lot. We've, we've talked a lot about the past, haven't we? But we haven't really talked about a, a figure of the present that potentially could exist. And this very well could be one of our first snapshots of a key character in the story present day that exists as we are essentially rebuilding civilization back on Vera. Kind of cool, man. We haven't really, this is to me kind of like bridging the gap of the past and the present a bit. And uh, if that's what Intrepid did with sharing this, this story here, um, very well done. I think very well done. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. It, it, it's a, it's a key way of, not making the past feel so long ago. True. Cause, Cause now when you've only got like a couple of steps in the tracking of that information and keep keeping that knowledge, it's going to be a lot easier to accurately remember that and portray it when we come back. Yeah. So that can lead to quicker adoption of the essence and just getting at that initial foothold when we come back to Vera. Yeah. That mm -hmm. and the, dynamic relationship that all the races have because obviously you have a race that has a long lifespan others will be you know at you know somewhere either in between or at the low end right thinking like humans in relation right if, if they're following that thread and how like elves kept their chronicle versus you know the human races and the dwarven races and the orcish races I mean, there's there's just a lot there too, like understanding like how those dynamics felt and how potentially like those different races handled their society. Because we, you know, with longer lifespans, one would expect there would be more consistency in leadership. So you may or may not have like a lot of change outside of maybe their military strategy that they hinted at. But like, how does that dynamic work in terms of politics with each of the races, yeah. right? Knowing right. that there's just these different levels here mm -hmm. too. You know, I'm really excited about right now. <laughs> We're most of the way through a potential show and we barely even skimmed the surface of the stuff and even bounced around on it. I'm like so freaking excited about continuing these conversations right now because yeah, I'm just like as a, as a as a you know future storyteller myself. I'm just sitting here looking at this and I'm going, you know, no wonder they maybe you're putting so much care into where we're going with kind of sharing lore, you know, like putting it in the way that they did for the live stream. This is this could potentially be like some very important. I just want to get. I just want to snatch Steven up and be like, all right, man, hold on, I gotta ask you, gotta ask you, man. Is this is this one of our present day characters? Can we just get a confirmation on that? You know, this is one of those days where I I kind of miss like that official content creator chat where I could shoot a message and he'd be like, oh, he might answer something. And then you're like, hey, can you share it? And he's like, yeah, or nay or whatever. But now I'm realizing mm -hmm. I don't need that chat. I can just shoot him a message anytime. He might ignore it. He may not message me back. But if he does, and he just confirms it. Ooh, that'd be great. I also want to kind of ask him on to pick his brain about stuff, but I also respect the guy's time. So it's also like, well, I can wait until the spring when we hit our next anniversary year or whatever. But I'm also like, I don't want to wait that long. But I guess we'll find out. I don't know what the hell to do, y'all. I'm just kind of doing on it. This is cool. I, if this is a present day character, then I'm sitting here in the back of my head going, oh, well done. One hell of a way to weave together the years of lore that you've shared all the way back from Delia's diary up until now well done if this is the case and i really hope so and it doesn't feel like much of a stretch if that's the case it really doesn't um man Ooh. and that's one excerpt there's one we got two more 
I guess I'm just going to loosely ask the question. Gentlemen, was there anything else about the lore that you really want to make sure that we just jump into? We want to mention today. We got plenty of time to detail things. I'm mindful of the time. I know I'm asking a potentially a lot or a little of you. I know it might be hard to answer the question. I see Daedalus over there going, who did the you? Exactly. It's like, <laughs> if I pull something out here, we might be here another 24 hours. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. Oh, uh, man. We need the rest of the month to talk about all the things that are yeah. here. And I love what you said, Half Tilt. Because I 100% agree with this. And this is something that I have said for years now. Friends, five years, man. I have been sharing thoughts, feedback, and talking about Ashes with community for five years about now. For about the five years now. It's hard to believe it went that fast, but... uh this show started out of a desire to build community around ashes of creation to find people who enjoyed talking about the same things related to the game system mechanics possibilities future endeavors lore and one of the best things that yeah originally called the simcast because it made sense because i didn't have a vision and i never did podcasting and you know what feel like I know what the hell I'm doing now and it feels good. It was a journey. It was a it was a journey of development, personal development and development as a creator. And this show specifically is the foundation for my ability to entertain as a content creator. 100% hands down it is. It genuinely is 150 episodes you learn a lot. Okay? So I have this all of what I've invested personally into this, what you all have invested into this, and this whole journey as a whole has has brought forth. But the best thing about it, and going back to what Half Tilt said is, when we sit around and we talk about with the powder to the face and laugh my ass off, we just get talk about getting dusted, it seems so, has multiple meanings, talk to me later. <laughs> Friends, the best experience I can I can tell you I have h hanging out and talking with all of you is when we brainstorm ideas and I could be sitting here talking about, oh, I think this and I think that. And someone says, yeah, Sam, but what about this idea? And then you're like, oh, shit. And then that idea plants a seed and that grows right next to the other idea you had. And now you got these two fully developed ideas. And then you realize they're different and yet the same. And then another idea comes forth and then that gets shared. And then someone else and then another person. And then it goes full circle. And as a community, we've been able to put together a lot of pieces that have made a lot of sense for this game. And I've had a lot of really great community experiences and conversations. Most importantly, in my opinion, that is what makes this show mean so much to me. And that's what makes all the Ashes talks, Ashes HQ, all the time invested, hanging out, chatting about Ashes worth it because it's such a good time. And friends, we've got at least two more story blurbs to talk about that's going to take us through the rest of the month, I promise you along with the news, along with the stuff of things that are going to be shared. And then we are very likely to have some more because all of those ideas are going to do exactly what we just talked about. We're going to take those ideas. We're going to pull from that. And then we're going to brainstorm some more. We're going to hit the end of the year with a bunch of different ideas. People are pondering. And then hopefully we'll be getting into seeing more systems. And this is the momentum, my friends. This is how we stay the course over all the course of this game's development. So buckle up, kick back, go check out their most recent uh, charity live stream if you didn't catch it. Catch out the catch the video blurbs that are there. Check out the wiki we've linked and shared that we'll be talking about. Put on your thinking hats. Gather around again real soon like we will be doing this week. 
between now and next time. And most importantly, on this specific topic, and absolutely not the new uh, ninja looter topic, I'd like to hear your thoughts about <laughs> what do you think? What do you think about this story of Kyrie, uh, the the long life of the elf and the elven races that have been, or the elven race rather, that was well, technically races if you go with, you know the two sub races now or whatever, but what do you think about that? And piggyback off the King a tracks discussion. So brainstorm, share your thoughts. I'm really hoping you do between now and next podcast, because I would love to take those ideas, ponder those before we move into the next one. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing next time. My friends moving into the next one, gathering your thoughts and your feedback as always. And before we sign off for today, Gentlemen, is there anything else you can think of that we want to talk about specific to today's show before we wind this one down? No, just excited for the future. I think that's yeah. kind of the the takeaway for me. I'm I'm excited to dig into episodes uh, two and three of the lore reveal uh, next time. Absolutely. Have to. What about you? Same, same boat. Um, uh, <laughs> there's there's a lot lot more to talk about. Oh yeah, we we'll have, need some time. Yeah, we will need some time, and that's just fine by me, friends. So everyone, remember, you don't have to be on the podcast. If you are here sharing in the journey, watching, listening, you're a Pathfinder, share your thoughts. You can do it via discord.gg forward slash smorg. Leave a comment on the video on YouTube, right? Shoot me a DM, whatever you want to do. Gentlemen, before we uh, sign off, why don't you shout out your domains? Let everybody know where they can find you when you're not here on this show. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at the Ashen Herald and on YouTube, youtube.com slash C slash the Ashen Herald. And half tilt. I am on Twitter at half underscore tilt or on Discord half tilt gamer. Friends, like I said, might be the end of today's show, but in closing, I want you all to remember whether you are listening to the podcast, whether you watch us live here on Twitch every 5 p.m. CDT, CST, I guess now here in the US, uh, Sundays, 5 p.m. Or catching it on YouTube. I want you to remember you two are an Ashes Pathfinder. We are really happy to have you here along on this journey with us. Much love to all of you. Thank you for your time. Much love to Intrepid Studios. Great job, everyone involved in this last charity. Really, truly proud of you all. And until next time, friends, live your best lives, walk in the light, have a great night. And we'll see you again next Sunday. Good night, everybody. Take care, yeah. folks.